What is good everybody, welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today we're back with a brand new episode of My Damn Thoughts where we're going to be breaking down a brand new WWE Elite or AEW Unrivaled Wave. And today we're looking at WWE Elite Series 107. Now this was a set that we did fully review besides the Cora Jade. Now I know the only reason that that happened is because we got the Finn Balor early. We got this on like a, an early shipment from ringside. And so we just reviewed the Finn Balor by itself. And honestly, I would love to do individual reviews views of each figure by itself and not have to combine them, but it's really hard the way I do my videos and edit them and the time it takes, and I wish I could just upload them all at once, you know, like Elite 107, here's every individual review with each individual figure, and you know, that would be the thing, but I don't even know if people would watch that, so I don't know, you guys can let me know down below, but the reason we did not get a full review of Cora Jade in is because the Finn Balor did have its own, and so it kind of messed up the flow and the rhythm of the video, so I do apologize for that. However, man, we will take a little bit of a look at the figure here today. It has some Cool accessories that has some cool stuff going on with it, but nonetheless, today it is all about breaking down the set in our categories and just kind of discussing the wave and ranking the set from worst to best, in my own personal opinion, which we will do at the end of the video. But nonetheless, let's get into my damn thoughts. And we usually start things off with my first thoughts on this individual wave when we first saw the images of it, when we first got to see it, and what we thought. I think we got to see render images of this wave back at San Diego Comic Con, was there for the actual presentation in person, and I was excited for it. You know, I was like, oh, up. Of Finn Balor, this and that, and I will say, like, the execution of the wave a little bit disappoints me, but I think character selection is okay. You know, I thought that it really needed a throwback figure or a flashback figure. I really enjoy when they put the flashback figures in the main line, but we have, like, all... If this were to release in 2023, this is legitimately a 2023 version of each one of these characters, which is insane to me. So, yeah, this is pretty much a modern take on every single one of these characters. I mean, you know, maybe a 2024 version or a Maybe a late 22 version, you know, depending on how you look at it. But let's get into the shelf warmer of the set. And I think this could go a couple different ways. But I think at the end of the day, I do think that it will be the Cora Jade figure. And this figure is not bad, you know. Really nice details going on. I'm not a big fan of the head sculpt. I think she looks a little bit derpy in my opinion. But the hat is really cool. Comes with the spikes or the studs. We've kind of seen a version of this. I think this is a new hat mold. But we did see something like this with the Bellas, I do believe, in a battle pack or something. But I like having the, the hat on there. It looks pretty cool. Tattoos look good and everything. It's a nice figure, you know. Kind of has like a Van Halen style style attire going. But yeah, cool figure, but I don't know. You guys know. that. But then again, on our toy hunt the other day, we did see where Roxanne Perez was like, they only have one copy of her figure, so maybe... I'm not entirely sure, man. We will have to see about that, but I think if they do give her a bunch of prints... Of course, wrestling fans know who she is, but I think that to a bystander that doesn't keep up week to week, I'm not entirely sure if they will be grabbing the figure as much as the other figure, so we'll have to see about that. But I have Cora J as the show former. Now, when you get into the hottest figure in the set, I went with Solo, but I think Finn Balor could also be a hot figure. You know, Solo Sokoa, his Elite 104 figure was super sought after. I think the updated version of that is going to be sought after as well. Now, when you get into the body mold and things of that nature, are people really going to care about that at the end of the day? I don't know. But I think people are going to want the Solo figure, man. The Solo figure, people have been begging for a Solo. But the Finn Balor, man, Judgment Day is a prominent, you know, has a prominent space on TV. So I think a Finn Balor with that jacket and stuff like that, that people are going to want that Finn Balor, man. Finn Balor moves a lot of units. A lot of people do buy his figures. You don't see, you know, Finn Balor just chilling on shelves most of the time, so I think his figure and Solo's figure will be the most sought after. Now, getting into our Chase figure, it is going to belong to Grayson Waller. Now, honestly, I like the regular version better, and I'm not a Grayson Waller guy, as I've discussed on the channel before, but the white and pink, that's right up my alley. I love the white and pink. I think that it does represent the character well and all those different things, but the Chase version is in black attire, and it's a solid-looking figure as well, but I definitely like the regular version better. I like the white. It has white, gold, pink. It's like airbrush. It's got a lot of cool things going on, so I easily like the white and pink. I mean, this is just no no doubts about it. The regular version to me is better, but yeah, Grayson Waller is the chase. I guess that means that he may not be getting any more figures anytime soon. We'll have to see about that, but he did get two different figures here. Getting into the best head sculpt in the set. I went with Solo, man. I really like the Solo head sculpt. Now, this is a brand new head sculpt. I think it captured that perfect just attitude and pissed offness that you get with the Solo Sokoa. Really enjoyed this. I like the new hair mold that you have going on. The fade looks good. Again, he has a fade before Roman Reigns got one, so that's good. I think it looks just like him. And you know, we've seen the Finn Balor one before. The Cora J definitely wasn't getting it. The Grayson Waller one was a bit off to me, even though it kind of captured the likeness to the character. Otis's, mine was a little bit misprinted, but it kind of reminds me of his other head sculpts. And then the Undertaker we've seen before, which I thought was really nice, but I gave it to Solo. At the end of the day, I think Solo had the best head sculpt. However, when you want to talk about the best articulation or the figure that feels the best in hand, I went with the Undertaker. Now, I think this may be sort of a hot take, but I just love the way this figure feels in hand, man. He is on ball joints and all those different things. 
things. He has a nice kick forward right there. He feels articulate. He's got a good ab crunch. He's got good waist swivel. The arms are pretty buttery smooth for the most part. I, I like it, man. It feels really good. And he doesn't have pegs, so you know his legs are going to be moving pretty damn smoothly. I like this figure a whole lot. Uh, this is a great Undertaker figure here, and one that I think a lot of people are going to sleep on, but he feels the best in hand. Next up, getting into the worst articulation. Now, there was two ways we could go about this, but at the end of the day, I went with Grayson Waller, man. I mean, I have to take the figure as is, right? I can't just go, oh, well, if you change this and change that, then no. We're right here, man. The big Kurt Angle Ultimate Edition knee pads that he has is going to prevent him from moving around very well, and that's the case here, man. You're not going to get really a net. Look at that knee bend right there, man. I mean, what are we doing? That's egregious, you know. He, he has a pretty good kick forward because he is on ball joints. I mistakenly thought he wasn't, but he is on ball joints, which I should have known because of the leg mold, but mine had like some little sculpts on it that made it look like it, but I don't know. If I can't bend the knee of the figure as is, I don't want it, man. And the rest of these can bend their knees, so I mean, that's that's like automatic for me, but Cora Jade, you know, her ab crunch isn't going to be the best. The solo figure, a bit questionable on the movement, but the rest of these guys can move much better, but Grayson Waller, I went with the worst articulation because of those massive knee pads. And then we get into the best accessory in the set. Now, there were some damn good accessories in this set. A lot of cloth goods, a lot of great things going on, but I went with Finn Balor's jacket. Stumbled over my words, but it's Finn Balor's jacket, man. I mean, this is this is quality. You could put this on like 77 different characters. Hooded, cloth goods, hoodie here with the black. You even have the silver inseam right there to make it look like a zipper. I like the reflective material. It is a great accessory. Fits the figure well. You had other great accessories. The We The One shirt, we've seen that before. The shoe shirt, we've seen that before. And then the Undertaker shirt is just a black shirt. So this black hoodie is easily the best accessory. I did like the kendo stick. I did like the interchangeable masthead sculpt. But for me, the jacket takes the cake, man. No buts about it. Now we are getting into our ranking. And we have to clear out and get into our ranking here, man. Let me adjust the damn camera because somehow it got all messed up. All right, man. So going over the criteria, excitement level for the figure, execution of details of the figure, feel in hand, articulation, likeness to the character on TV. Lots of different things go into the criteria, but those are kind of the main five points, I'd say. But also, just because a figure comes out at the bottom of the ranking doesn't mean it's not good whatsoever, and do it doesn't mean that it's not a good figure in general. And just because a figure comes in at number one doesn't mean that it's good in general, or that it doesn't have any bad qualities whatsoever, and that it's just the greatest figure of all time. So with all those things being said, let's dive into the ranking, and I'm starting out at number six. And this one's going to Grayson Waller, man. Personally, not a big fan of Grayson Waller. Never, never really hooked me, you know, I, I just, I don't know, I just don't connect with the character that much, so therefore wasn't really that excited for the figure in general, I don't like the Ultimate Edition Kurt Angle knee pads, I don't particularly care for the head sculpt, I think it looks like the character and it matches that face that he makes, but I don't know, I'm just not, I'm not a big fan, so I, I went with him at the bottom for me. Coming up next, even though I do like the gear, I do want to say I do like the Grayson Waller gear a lot. Next up, I am going with the Cora Jade figure, man, the Cora Jade figure, she's got those damn basic Bailey boots that I hate. But also, you know, the rest of the figures in the wave I would much rather have. And therefore, you know, nothing about this figure really broke the scale. Let me adjust the camera again. Sometimes a figure could be so good that some of the things that I don't like about it or maybe that I don't like about the character or what have you can precede that. You know, sometimes that is not always the case. But in this case, you know, I think that it lacks something. There's something off about the head sculpt. Much like Roxanne Perez. Good figure, whatnot. But I think there's something missing in the head sculpt. Coming in at number four, I'm going with Big Man Otis, man. The Otis figure is fun. He can pose around great, but I'm not finding a ton different from his last figure. I know we have the interchangeable hair, which I like. I like the gear. I like the updated Alpha Academy version of Otis, but at the end of the day, I don't know. It just doesn't move the needle much for me, but I do like it better than the other two figures on the list. Coming up next may shock some people, Brad, but I'm going to get into it. We have the Finn Balor figure. You guys know that I'm a huge Finn Balor guy, one of my favorite wrestlers on the planet. Massive Finn Balor guy. Got the big collection and whatnot, but at the end of the day, man, I don't like this new leg mold and this new stuff they have going on. For whatever reason, they had him at a particular height for a long time, and then they decided to give him Daniel Bryan thighs, which are way too small. Lowered his height, so he's very tiny now. And I know he's not supposed to be 6'3 or something like that, but they make his legs and how he looks really, really small. And I don't like this new jogger mold, man. It has no shin cut. I know I know a particular... AEW and Jazzwares always put the shin cut in there. I know Mattel usually leaves it out, but I'm, I'm docking the figure for those points. It's also a repeat head sculpt. They had a really great opportunity to give me the tapered beard and all the different things I like. I like the jacket. 
and I love Finn Balor, and I like the purple details and the custom J's. I also hate the damn Cena shoe mold that they keep giving this guy, so, I mean, if it had a better newly invented formula or sculpted formula and all these different things, he'd probably be number one easily, but I love Finn Balor so much, and then you give me these crappy things about the figure, it lowers it on the, on the list, obviously, so there's my stance on that. Now we're getting into our top two figures, man, and I don't know if you guys know where we're going here, but at number two, we have Solo Sokoa, man. The Solo figure, as great as it is and as better as it is than his Elite 104 counterpart, he still has a lot of issues, man. I mean, he can, like, he is not on ball joints, so his legs are very rickety. He cannot kick forward. You can hear that snapping. I feel like the figure's gonna break at any moment possible. I do like the torso. I feel like his arms need to be bigger. They're way too skinny of arms. Just the whole legs, man. The whole legs need to go back to the drawing board. His legs are super skinny as well. There's just, I just think that his entire formula could be tweaked, even though I do like the torso choice and whatnot, and I like it more than his Elite 104. It's still, it's still just not good enough, I don't think, so I'm going with that. So that leaves our number one figure, which I did not see coming whatsoever, but I'm going with the Elite 107 Undertaker, man. That Undertaker figure blew me away. I love the feel and hand of the figure. I like this post-retirement style deal of Undertaker. I don't know, it's just a really fun figure. I like the bandana and hat. I like the glasses. I know we've seen this head sculpt before, but it looks really, really good. It's the best version of this head sculpt we've seen. The watch accessory. Been begging for a watch accessory forever. Love the shirtless Undertaker. I'm glad that they went with a shirtless Undertaker instead of molding this shirt on like an Elite 102 Commissioner Foley. So giving us this shirtless tattooed Undertaker gives us another way to get that tattooed shirtless Undertaker without having to purchase the ringside exclusive. So that was a great way to do that right there. I like the gloves. I like the legs. They pose around great, even though we've seen them for a long time. And so, yeah, man, I really like the Undertaker figure. It's, it really is a damn good figure. So I had to give Undertaker the nod right there, man. That's that's good football right there. I, I like it a lot. At the end of the day, I like this set. It's definitely not my favorite set of all time. A, a lot of these figures have their own issues, but aesthetically, they do pass a lot of the tests, but I don't know. If we were ranking every set from Elite 101 to this set, I don't know where it would fall. That may be another video one day where we rank, you know, Elite 100 through wherever we're at, maybe. Still working on the Elite 100, 1 through 100 ranking, by the way. I had to wait on my office completion before I could resume that project, so there's that. Nonetheless... I'm getting the hell out of here, man. Thank you guys so very much for watching. I'd love to know your thoughts on my ranking down below. What figure you think's the best versus which figure you hate. But I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. Huge shout out to our Patreon members of the MDT YouTube channel. I appreciate all those fellows over there. Thank you guys so much for your continued support on the channel. Love each and every one of you guys. If you're hitting the Royal Rumble, man, let me know down below. I will also be there. But I'm getting out of here, man. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you later. <laughs>